Well, good morning. Yeah, that sounds good. So I'm Mark Vache, and as your uh, congregational lay leader here, it's my pleasure to welcome you on this brisk and really beautiful day that God has created and given to us. You know, he does tell us to rejoice and be glad in it, and I don't know about you, but what better way to do that by coming together than by coming together as the centenary family here to, to worship him and to celebrate him, to praise him, and to thank him. And today is one of those special times that we're all together, one time, one place, young and old, traditional and modern, in person and online. In Christ, we are one people. We have one God, and we have one Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. Amen. So today's special for some other reasons. First, as you know, yesterday was Veterans Day, that day each year that we pause to honor the men and women, both past and present, who have served in our armed forces. And if you were in the Army or the Air Force or the Navy, the Marines, the Coast Guard or the Reserves, I'd like you to stand up. Uh, briefly here so we can just show you our appreciation. Great, so. Thank you so much for your service and for those we think also who are out there putting themselves in harm's way today uh, for the freedom of not just our country but the freedom throughout the world. Today also is Missions Sunday and our service is going to be a little bit different today. We're going to have a number of videos spotlighting different missions that uh, people from Centenary are involved in. Interestingly enough, Pastor Tim and Gina are not here today for Missions Sunday. Um, I think they have a pretty good excuse. Uh, while we're here in Modesto, uh, they're on their way home from 10-day mission in Guatemala. And we pray for safe travel for them. We're looking forward to having them back. And I'm sure in the coming weeks that they'll share a little bit about their experience sharing God's love and helping meet people's physical needs in Guatemala. So in a few minutes, we're going to move into worship. But first, let me share a few announcements today. You'll find a few of them in the bulletin. You also can find them uh, on the church website or using that Centenary app. So the altar flowers today are in loving memory of Wayne and Barbara Clare, given by Bonnie Clare and family. So thank you, Bonnie. And also thank all of you through the course of this year who um, provided the floral arrangements every Sunday. Our table, in the table in the back, there is a sign-up uh, for flower altar dedications in 2024. We invite you to do that. I will tell you that inflation that we all struggle with has caught up with the floral uh, shop that supplies our flowers. So uh, the cost in 2024 for an arrangement on Sunday is going to be $65. Our fellowship today after the service is going to be a Mission Sunday lunch over in the Fellowship Center. Everyone's invited to enjoy a meal of chili, chips, salsa, Corn, salad, fruit, lemonade, and water, all prepared by our missions team here at Centenary. It's actually the meal, the exact meal that we prepare and serve at the Salvation Army Shelter. And uh, we're going to serve it to you the same way that we serve it at the shelter uh, every month. There's no charge for the meal, but there will be a giving box if you want to help cover the cost um, of this meal. So that's after the service today. And also in the Fellowship Center after the service, we're going to be put, putting together blessing bags. Um, and these are going to be bags uh, that have everything from water bottles and granola to uh, toothbrushes and socks and a little uh, list of uh, resources. And it's designed for you to take one or two, have them in the trunk of your car, or have them with you when you're out in the community. And if you come upon someone who is in need, this is a great way to help meet those needs. Don't have them have to give money, but you can give them this little blessing uh, bag. So that will be happening today. So invite all of you after the service to head over there to the Fellowship Center for the Missions Sunday lunch and then the blessing bags. Next Sunday, November 19th, we're going to be dedicating the Operation Christmas Child Shoe Boxes. And... Uh, 
If you haven't done one, there are some empty boxes in the back after the service. You can take one of those, fill them with things for children around the world. We need to have those boxes back uh, next Sunday, no later than the start of the 1030 service. Uh, we will be... Um, um, We'll be uh, praying over them, and then we'll be delivering them uh, out to Check Calvary Chapel, which is the drop-off box for Modesto here, and they'll be taken and find their way around the world uh, to children in, uh, in countries that uh, are actually probably beyond the poverty level. So it's a way to share the joy of Christmas with them in a real way. And then mark uh, Wednesday 29th on your calendar and plan to join us for Go Tell It in the Valley, a musical preview of Advent. It's going to be an evening of Christ-centered music as we enter that season leading up to Christmas and the birth of our Lord and Savior. Starts at 6 p.m., and there will be refreshments afterwards. And then this coming Tuesday, the 14th, is our annual Centenary Church Charge Conference. This is the annual business meeting of the church. Uh, everyone's welcome to attend. It's going to be a sh fairly short uh, meeting at 5.30 over in rooms 15 and 16. Uh, members will be able to vote on church committee officers and other items for 2024, and our district superintendent will be there that evening. And then finally, as always, on behalf of the church, really appreciate your continued support of Centenary, of the mission and ministry here at Centenary. You give of your time, you give of your talents, and you give of your treasures, that is, your financial resources. All of that is a blessing from God, and he gives it to us to bless others. So we appreciate that. You know, if you want to give today, you can. There's giving boxes. You can also give online at the church website or using that centenary app. So as we move to worship, let me open us in prayer this morning. Father, you tell us that it is good for brothers and sisters to be together. And here we are, Lord, together, your people, at this, your church. Father, may your Holy Spirit just fall afresh on us today. May you speak to us individually and collectively through the songs that we sing, through the scripture and message we receive, through the prayers that we pray. We are yours, God. So have your will and your way with us on this very day. We ask this in the great and the glorious name of Jesus. Amen.
Well, good morning. It's that red hymnal time of the morning. Can we all stand up together with those red hymnals out and sing hymn number 569, We've a Story to Tell the Nation. We've a story to tell to the nations that shall turn their hearts to the right. A story of truth and mercy, a story of peace and light, a story of peace and light for the darkness shall turn. darkness shall turn to dawning and the dawning to noonday bright and Christ's great kingdom shall come on earth the kingdom of love and light we've a message to give to the nations that the Lord The darkness shall turn to dawning, and the dawning to noonday bright, and Christ's great kingdom shall come on earth, the kingdom of love and light. We've a Savior to show to the nations who the past The darkness shall turn to dawning, and the dawning to noonday bright, and Christ's great kingdom shall come on earth, the kingdom of love and light.
You may be seated. And this is the time that the children uh, can leave for the children's program. I think they're in the back there, yes. Okay. I think go. So we come to the time now, um, each week that we uh, go to the Lord in prayer. So would you bow your heads with me? Father in heaven, we come to you today with uh, humble hearts. And we come with thankful hearts. They're humble, Lord, because you are the God of heaven and earth the creator of everyone and everything that's ever been and ever will be. And we know, Lord, how often we fall so short of being the people you have created and called us to be. But, Father, we're also thankful. We're thankful because you are God and we are not. Hmm. You are a God of love and and mercy and grace and forgiveness and healing and hope. And thanks to Jesus, we can have a deep, intimate, personal relationship with you in which we can approach you and your throne of grace with confidence. And we do that now, Lord. Father, you know that there are some, actually many among us, who just are going through the struggles and the sufferings of all sorts. And as we silently give those names to you, the names of those who are on our hearts, Father, in that love and mercy and grace that is you, May even now as we're here, and even in this moment, Lord, may they feel your presence in a powerful way. And Lord, as your servant David wrote, as they walk through the valleys of the shadows of darkness and of despair and even of death, May they fear not, knowing that you, you are the good shepherd, and you are with them every step of the way. Today, God, we also lift up the, the world. You created it to be a perfect place. And we, the people who you created to populate it, the reality is we have turned it into quite a mess. Father, when we look around our community or our country, our culture, and most of the world, it's so easy to be so overwhelmed by the brokenness and the heartache, the hatred, the pain, the despair, the evil. And yet, God, even though it can seem so hopeless, even to us at times, we know there is hope. And we know that that hope is not in people or politicians or programs. That hope is in you, and it's only in you. And Father, when we, when we pray for the world, we can pray for all sorts of things, for peace, for justice, for civility, for protection, for the innocent, for safety, for the vulnerable, for an end to poverty. The list can be very long, and those are all things worth praying for. And we give those to you, God. But Lord, may your priorities become our priorities. And Father, what breaks your heart, may that break our hearts. 
your son Jesus came to your earth to seek and to save the lost, including every one of us here this morning. And when he left, he called his disciples to do the same including every one of us here this morning. So God, we just ask this morning that you would just guide us, that you would encourage us, that you would equip us to be who you want us to be, to be where you want us to be, and to do what you want us to do for your kingdom. We ask this according to your will, God, and we do it in the name of the one who taught us to pray, as we do now, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. So our two scripture passages today are Jesus' commands to his disciples, whom he appeared to, after his crucifixion, after his death, and after his resurrection. So in Matthew 28, 18 to 20, we find the 11 disciples, they're up on a mountain where their risen Lord had told them to be. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And then in Acts 1.8, we read Jesus' final recorded words to his disciples before he ascended to heaven. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, in Ju- throughout Judea, in Samaria, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. That first passage in Matthew, it's known as the Great Commission. So when someone is commissioned, when a person is commissioned, They're appointed or ordered or authorized to do something. And that's exactly what Jesus was doing then. He was commissioning. He was appointing, ordering, authorizing the disciples to go and do the greatest work that any human being could ever do. And that's the kingdom work of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ here, there, and everywhere. So how did they carry out that commission, these disciples of his? Well, just like Jesus, they met people where they were. They got to know them. They built relationships. They prayed with and for them. They did good works that addressed the people's physical needs. But above all, first and foremost, they shared the good news. They spoke the truth. They baptized people, and they taught them how to follow Jesus how to live their lives for Jesus, and then how to share that with others. And they did everything with the loving and compassionate touch of the master. Just think about it. How could they have possibly have done that? I mean, it can't have been easy. It can't have been comfortable. They must have felt unprepared or maybe doubted that they could ever do it, or maybe they were even just scared to death. Well, the truth is, they couldn't do it. 
at least not by their own strength, their own skill, or sheer determination. And the good thing is that they didn't have to. Remember what Jesus told them. In Matthew, he assures them, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I am with you always. I am with you always. And in Acts, he tells them, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You know what that says? It says a lot, but what it says is that this great commission is actually a great co-mission. The Holy Spirit would be with the disciples every step of the way. And you know what, brothers and sisters? It's still like that today. Everything that Jesus said and did as he commissioned those disciples more than 2,000 years ago, he's calling us. He's commissioning us. He's commanding us. That's me. That's you to do the same thing. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are a disciple of his. You are a follower of Christ. And he is commissioning you and me to co-mission with him. Okay, it may not always be easy. Mm -mm. It may not always be comfortable. Mm -mm. We may at times even doubt we could do it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we can be terrified at the thought of it. Mm -hmm. Amen? But Jesus assures us, just as he dis assured his first disciples that he is with us always, he will be with us always, and that as we step forward in faith, his Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God, is going to give us the power and everything else that we need to carry the good news here in our community, in our neighborhoods, in our state, in our country, and around the world, where we know when we look at the world, without him there is no hope and there is no future. So there's all sorts of ways that we, you and me, can answer that call by praying, by giving, and by going and doing. We have a series of videos that look at some of those ways that we can do those things here at Centenary. So we're going to turn our attention to the big screen. We're going to hear first from our Centenary brother and sister, Bob and Joyce Uziak, who have been involved for more than 50 years in mission with Modesto Gospel Mission and Food Bake Sunday. And then we'll have a video by Rosa Bahamande, a newer member of our church family, who will share her thoughts on sharing. So let's look at the screen. Well, I've always been the one that cared for people, but I got into missions basically in about 1968 when I joined First Methodist. Now, Mimi Fisher was my fellowship friend, and she was with the uh, Interfaith Ministries, and she invited me, so I worked interfaith for several years. Just people helping people. They have food. They, we have people that come in. We supply food. We supply clothing and needs of people for the needy.
Well, it's something that I really enjoy doing, and it, it's something I've always wanted to do. And it was, I just felt that it was something I could help people. And you, you work at Ed if you really want to. Something I can do, like I say, we can't go to other countries, we can't build and things like that because we're not physically able. But we can serve and uh, do local work like this and help people here with the local missions. I went back in years ago, we used to go out into the fields after the farmers had, their harvest was over. They'd let us come in and uh, pick whatever was left, and we'd pick peaches, we'd pick uh, squash, sweet potatoes. Well, uh, I followed my leader over here. She was doing a great job uh, out there, and, uh, and I got involved with more so was after I retired. And when I retired, I got a chance to fill in, and we do everything together. So because of that, I was right there by her side with what I can, what I could do together. And uh, the important things were the local facilities that were here that we could serve at uh, between the Salvation Army dinners mm -hmm. and right down the line we were, we were there. Uh, I didn't uh, bring up the fact that we took communion to the people that were in recovery mm -hmm. at the local uh, institutions here. Uh, the first First week of the month after mm -hmm. communion at the church, we would take the elements to the people, and we had a we had a large uh, uh, group that we were going to open for us. I, uh, we didn't have to cook at the church and haul everything down, so preparation was was very was done very quickly and the serving mm -hmm. was done because everything was right there and the people were so appreciative. Good morning, my name is Rosa Baumonde, and I started attending um, this church um, close to a year ago. I immediately liked uh, Centenary um, because it's not only a contemporary church, but it's a church of service uh, to others in our community. How I got involved with the uh, Gospel Mission, on my first day, I found some information in the back table of the church, and Melba and Diana filled me in with more information 
And that's how I decided to join uh, the team that goes every fourth uh, Sunday uh, of the month to help out with um, the uh, serving of the food. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, food is uh, served to approximately 75 to 120 people, and it changes from month to month. These days, uh, we live in such a rush in our daily routines that sometimes we overlook um, the fact there are others um, uh, who need our help. Uh, it is a very rewarding experience for me, and as Christians, uh, we should follow Jesus' teachings when he said uh, in the Bible, um, on Mark, the book of Mark, um, I have come not to be served, but to serve you. In closing, I encourage you to do it if you haven't done it yet. All you need is compassion and a smile. Try it and you will like it. God bless you. Well, thank you, Bob and Joyce, and thank you, Rosa, um, for sharing um, how you're reaching out with Christ's love in a very real way to our community. Another of our centenary family, our sister Sally Taylor, shared that she sees her mission in life as sharing God's love and kindness. She wrote some things about it. Let me share a little bit what she wrote. This is Sally Taylor. I used to think that to be part of a mission, I needed to pack my suitcase and go to a foreign country to share his love and kindness. But now I know instead of my suitcase, I can pack an Operation Christmas Child box and include a note to the little one receiving this special box of his love and kindness. I can donate some warm, fuzzy slipper socks to our winter clothing drive and food to the food bank. I can prepare a meal for a friend or neighbor recovering from an accident or surgery. I can serve meals at the gospel mission, provide transportation so a friend can attend Sunday church services and other church activities. I can knit, crochet, loom warm hats and scarves for the needy. One of my favorite missions is copying, cutting, and preparing projects for the teachers at Standerford School, including large alphabet letters, flowers, Halloween bats, and Christmas stars, all fun stuff. Thank you, Lord, for all the mission opportunities that we can part be part of. So thank you, Sally, for that. We're going <clears> to... <throat> We're going to now, Jennifer's going to come up. She's going to lead us in the singing of Tell Me the Stories of Jesus. That's number 277 in that red hymnal. Sing with me. Tell me the story of Jesus. I love.
You may be seated. So for several years now, Seminary has hosted a very special mission to Afghan refugees. Each week here were the site of English language classes for women, a program that we do in partnership with World Relief nonprofit and also with Modesto Junior College. So in the Centenary app or on the website, you can learn a lot about this. But for now, let's turn our attention again to the big screen. We'll have a couple of short videos on the outreach as well as the children's program for the Afghan women. Road. As we prayed for the right resources to come together, God stirred hearts and aligned passions. A beautiful collaboration began between Modesto Junior College, Centenary Church, and World Relief. Pulling our strengths together, the Afghan women's class was formed. Since the class has started, we have seen tremendous growth, confidence, and success in the women's lives. See what they have to say about the class. اول برای من بسیار مشکل بود که انگلیسی بیاموزم. هیچ وقت برای خواندن انگلیسی فکر نکرده بودم که روز انگلیسی بیاموزم. مگر حالا بسیار خوشحال هستم که انگلیسی را آغاز کردم. حالا می توانم قیمت اشیا را در مارکت بپرسم و کمی صحبت کنم. من در افغانستان معلم بودم و انگلیسی را در مکتب کمی خوانده بودم مگر به قدر نخوانده بودم که مشکلاتم را حل بسازم من از صنف انگلیسی زیاد آموختم می توانم حالا جملات انگلیسی بسازم فیل های بودن را آموختم اگر این طور ادامه بدهم زیاد می آموزم و من بسیار خوشحال هستم وقتی من در افغانستان بودم من اجازه مکتب رفتن را نداشتم و هیچ وقت انگلیسی و دری را نیامخته بودم در افغانستان مگر من انگلیسی یاد گرفتن را در امریکا شروع کردم من زیاد آموختم و زیاد تغییرات را در خود می بینم در زبان انگلیسی من خوشحال هستم که انگلیسی می آموزم The kids have also benefited from the child care workers They are learning social skills and appropriate behavior in the classroom They too are not only learning just English but even Spanish We know God's heart is for these women and it has been such a joy to see them grow and begin to integrate into the community they now call home. We are so thankful for the partnerships that made this class happen. So just as that Afghan outreach that we have um, that serve really people that have come from a different culture, a different country, a different background, and even a different faith. So too, we do go to the ends of the earth, as you know, notably to Guatemala, where our teams have worked with Porch de Solomon to help build homes, provide medical care, and of course, share the love of Christ. We have a couple of videos here in which some of our centenary brothers and sisters are going to share their experiences in Guatemala. My name is Mike Hellman. My name is Jane Hellman. My name is Greg Demers. Isabel. Isabel. Um, she was living in extreme poverty. Um, she, if you stood in her house, you could touch all the walls. Her house was really a piece of corrugated metal leaning against a neighbor's house. She had a light bulb, 
and, and a dirt floor and a garden hose. There was a small table and a single chair in there, a blanket and a campfire, and that's where she lived with her son. Her three-year-old son. The porch heard of her problems and built her a house. And we got involved when they also built a chicken coop so that she could start um, selling chickens and eggs and become self-supporting. The porch uh, provided about two dozen chickens, full-grown chickens and some babies. And that began her business. So the thing that we gave her most valuable to her was the word, four letter word hope. She had hope now. She did not have any hope before. The other thing that in going to Guatemala and seeing the, just the, the different situations that had to occur for this woman to be able to um, have her tend to raise these chickens, have a, have a home for her and her little boy, we, it, it really increased our faith and our understanding of just how big God is. Um, and it doesn't have to be in somewhere like Guatemala, but it's very clear somewhere like that, that they struggle so much for their food, for their home, for just for life. Um, anyway, we just saw how much God protected them, how much God helped them. Um, it was, it was something, it's hard to explain, I'm sorry, but it, it's, it's pretty amazing to see the changes that had to occur and then what did occur. So, and, the um, and, and the joy, yeah. As a, as a chicken, backyard chicken owner, I, I really enjoyed the fact that this was how they were gonna, you know, gonna, she was gonna have her business with the chickens and the eggs and the other things that came along after that. So I went because of the seeing the and hearing about the experiences of the first team that went down there and uh, how they were impacted and how and what had happened to them. And us as well. Yeah. I mean, we we just heard about what God was doing down there. We wanted to join in. Um, we wanted to use what skills we had, so um, we went. Um, in wrapping this up, I, I just want to encourage you that there is a joy in serving in missions. It doesn't have to be overseas. It doesn't, you know, it can be at your neighbors. But there is a joy in serving and sharing God's love with people. You may not do it with words. We didn't do it with words in Guatemala. We, that we had to have interpreters uh, for most of us. So it was simply by our actions. And I will just mention one one precious thing that of many that happened was at one of our clinics there was a gentleman who, who he was probably in his 50s maybe a little older he couldn't see and so we fortunately had glasses there and after numerous trying on of glasses he got a pair that his whole face lit up and he just literally he put them on and he literally danced out of the clinic just so joyful and grateful that he had received these glasses. And I, I, my prayer is that somehow in all that, he actually could see um, the Lord providing for him. Hi, I'm Debbie Dix, and I wanted to talk to you about missions. I don't remember how long it's been since I've done missions. I've kind of thought about it. I go out of all missions the first two. I've gone on two now. And after I wanted to wait till after I retired because I couldn't take the time off. Um, I worked on the mission building team, which is quite difficult to do, but there were things that I could do at my age that was really okay to do. Um, we did the easy stuff, the guys did the heavy lifting, and, and it wasn't that we had to work all the time and it was gonna be hard. We could work and do what we wanted, and sometimes the, the young 
children, when they got back from their schooling, they would come and help us bend some of the foundations, help us cut the wire. So they got involved. And the widows also kind of showed us up when we were doing hauling stuff up in the bucket brigade, and they would pass us by and off they would go. So it was really great to have them join us. I felt like they were, we were part of their team that we could do this. And it was something that I, you know, we've heard about the Guatemala teams for a long time. So I, I really felt compelled to go do it. So God sends these messages to us, or maybe an unmedge, to, to do something, something with missions. And we know that it's there. What we have to do is pull it out of us and find out what we would like to do, what we feel comfortable doing, what we need to do. It all is, it's already in our heart. We just need to listen to God and, and follow through. And so I did that when I went to Guatemala. I am not a traveler. <laughs> and so that was really tough for me, but I'm glad I did it. I wouldn't change that for anything. So be thinking about what you might be able to do. There's little things you can start with and then continue on with the bigger things. Well, get out that red hymnal again. We're going to turn to 593 and sing, Here I Am, Lord. Will you stand with me again, if you're able?
Well, amen. Whom shall I send? So as you come to close of this Mission Sunday, a quick look ahead to 2024. We're going to continue our involvement in all the things that uh, have been shared this morning, the gospel mission, the food bank, the Afghan outreach, Christmas child, all those things, Guatemala. We're going to continue those. But we're also looking into having a number of short-term mission opportunities for youth, adults, and for families. City Impact is a multifaceted ministry. It serves the least and the lost in San Francisco's Tenderloin District. Um, years ago, and for several years, Centenary's youth went there uh, every year, every summer, to serve the homeless in that city. And in the past year, both um, my granddaughter and Pastor Bob's, two of his grandchildren, were part of City Impact's ministry there. So our missions team is looking at forming this partnership with City Ministry and having opportunities for us. Uh, we can serve here. We have the missions here in our Jerusalem uh, and in our Judea. We have some missions to do in what we might call Samaria, not far away but totally different. And we have the missions to do to the ends of the earth, Guatemala and other places. So I'd encourage you, invite you to please pray for our missions team as they work out those details. And then also for God to provide other opportunities for us to reach out to co-mission with him into this world that is increasingly dark, increasingly desperate, and increasingly without any hope. So it's time for the benediction. And what better words to close with than those words that Jesus spoke to his first disciples and that he speaks to us today. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you, we, will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, therefore, go. Go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. To that, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Have a beautiful day. Don't forget fellowship over there, the lunch and the uh, blessing bags. And all of this will be, if you want to see some other things, I think with closed captions, will be on... Um, on, online later today. Blessings on you.